Hello Wranglers, check one, two, welcome back. Today is Sinister Saturday, where I tell you scary stuff like uh, paranormal stories or something along those lines. And today we're talking about the Bell Witch, as you can see on my title card. And um, it's my intention to debunk it, but f some of you are going to love that, some of you are going to hate it. Anyway, um, let me start out and uh, clear a few things up here or let me tell you about a few things about myself as you know I've lived from Alaska to Georgia all over this wonderful country of ours and I've done uh, lots of different jobs one of them was I was in law enforcement I was a police officer city police officer for two years so I'm gonna put on my police hat and I'm gonna keep my glasses on for this one and I'm gonna take a look at it from that perspective um, but let me tell you about the story of the Bell Witch first okay uh, Bell Witch starts, the story takes place between 1817 and 1821. This was before the Civil War. This was, um, you know, uh, back then. And, uh, it started with the, uh, the Bell family, of course, as we, we have the, uh, the name, the Bell Witch, where John Bell Sr., his wife Lucy, and their daughter Betsy moved to Tennessee to a big plot of land. Now, the Bells were somewhat wealthy, and they had, uh, they actually had servants, and they did have slaves. Unfortunately, at that time, you know, this is before the Civil War, there was still slavery going on. And um, so they moved to this plot of land in Mississippi uh, to make their fortune, or whatever you'd call it, and started living there. Well, things started to become strange. There would be animals following them around, like they'd see big black dogs sitting at the door, or a bird, a strange looking bird on a fence, or something like that, and one of the servants tells a story about how he was chased by a rabbit, and the rabbit chased him all over, and he finally got tired and sat down, and the rabbit jumped up on a log and just stared at him, and things like this, you know, uh, and then, uh, you know, animal stories, okay? Next, uh, they started hearing mumblings and whisperings and stuff like that, and uh, these got louder and louder, and, and this thing claimed to be um, basically old Kate Bats, or Kate Bats, and she uh, was speaking from beyond the grave, but in a, a disembodied voice. They didn't see anything, they just heard this voice talking to them, and the voice did not like John Bell Sr. It had something against him, and uh, so it would torment him, and, uh, you know, you know, say bad things, I reckon, and um, go after him like that. But it liked Lucy, okay? And I'm going to get back to that in a bit. Lucy was his wife, okay? Um, the uh, stranger things kept going on, uh, you know, different different events. One of them was they claimed the Bell Witch gave a sermon in two different locations at the same time, 13 miles apart. Now, I don't know how a spirit, invisible spirit, is going to give a sermon to whoever, but uh, that would have made uh, quite an impact all over the, the area, you know, huge impact, I think. Um, and uh, this spirit said it was like a spirit from the Bible and it enjoyed biblical discussions and arguments and all that, but it became more and more irritated and, and, and aggravated with John Bell and uh, um, rumors, you know, different rumors are flying around. One of them is uh, that Andrew Jackson came there to check this out, him and his men, and they only stayed one night because they got scared off and um you know so they left the area and uh, I, mean, I don't know what the thing said to them but he you know supposedly was enough to frighten these soldiers and uh so they they moved on and eventually john bell died he 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 just got sicker and sicker as time went on and he passed away and also at this point a little bit after that betsy bell had been engaged to a man named was it I got my notes here. Josh Gardner, okay, and uh, that engagement fell apart and, and broke up. And um, I mentioned earlier that the ghost disliked John and hated John Bell Sr., but liked Lucy. In fact, the ghost called Lucy the most wonderful, perfect woman in the world and would give her fruit and things like this. Um, kind of an interesting contrast there, I think. Okay. Now, let's put on, we got the police hat on, and I'm going to tell you what I think really happened here. Um, first of all, I'm going to start with, uh, you guys may have heard of Occam's Razor. It's a, a thought uh, a thought process, and it's uh, simply put, it's all things being equal, the simplest explanation is most likely the correct one. Now, the simplest explanation here, and after reading multiple articles on this, and even not only about the, the Bell Witch, but things going on around the world at the time, 
murder by arsenic was not uncommon, okay, not in, in Europe and in America. And um, you can slowly add arsenic to somebody's food or whatever, and they get sicker and sicker over time and eventually died. And in fact, all the accounts that you read of John Bell's death and sickness it, line up perfectly with arsenic poisoning, okay? Now, another thing, you know, that uh, we learn, you know, you, you can see this on FBI profiler shows and things like that. Um, they talk about different ways they they track down suspects. And women are the most likely ones to use poison in a murder. I'm not saying that's 100% exclusive because there are cases of men doing it. But most of the time, if it's a poisoning, uh, it, it's smart to consider a female suspect. Men are generally more violent in the way they they commit murder so depending on the way a murder is committed it can give some indicators of who or not really who but a possible gender or a, you know um would you say possible you know however you describe it um they have tendencies for that okay and um so anyway that uh, so this is poisoning okay so this guy it looks like he died completely of arsenic poisoning now, uh, uh, that, you know, I read that, and I thought, okay, that, that makes sense. And uh, um, it, one, one thing that stuck out in my mind was uh, on the account where it said that the Bell Witch thought Lucy was the most beautiful, perfect woman in the world. Now, considering that I think this is, uh, there is no Bell Witch, that this was a poisoning uh, murder, um, someone like Lucy saying this, that, you know, someone telling her this is extremely narcissistic and extremely, um, I don't know if I want to use the word problematic or what, but it's bizarre, okay? It's, it's, it, bizarre is one word, but it's also very indicative, I think, of uh, the thought process I've got going here. I think that, I'll say it right out, I think Lucy poisoned John over the course of about three years, and I don't know why she did. I don't know her motive. I don't know if she had a secret love interest, if she wanted the property and land to herself. She had some grudge against him, um, but she she basically took took care of him. Also, the uh, uh, I shouldn't say take care of him. I meant you know, in the bad way, take care of him. The uh, engagement between Betsy and Josh broke up, and uh, Lucy was largely involved with that. So, um, I'm not sure what, what in you know, the exact reasons there, but, you know, there's multiple, multiple reasons, and it doesn't necessarily have to be Lucy. It could have been somebody else. It could have been Betsy. It could have been one of the servants that didn't like him. It could have been a lot. There's a lot of possible, other possible suspects, but I'm, right now, I'm hanging my hat, throwing my dice, throwing my 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 pot my money into the pot on on that it's Lucy you know and because I think her statement's very interesting and very illuminating and um, the way he died I think that uh, she had the most to gain so you follow the money and she would have gotten everything and um, not did not have a pesky son-in-law in there that could possibly inherit uh, <laughs> or take over the the plot of land they had there in Tennessee. So um, now it comes to the thing. Well, what about all these accounts of the you know the dual sermons and the people hearing the voices and all these you know other accounts of people that claim to have heard the voices or been attacked by the witch and this and that and the other. That uh, I would explain that simply put, it's it's a myth. Okay, this started out as a story. I think that Lucy probably created to you know, divert some suspicion, started telling about rumors about ghosts around the house or stories about ghosts around the house and the servants and the other people in the community, little, their tiny little bell community there started picking up on it and they started seeing strange things, you know, power of suggestion, started, you know, this animal here, the animal there. So it, this started to spread like wildfire that there was a witch there, okay? This this unseen voice and, and you know, um, we don't have any evidence of any of this actually happening. We just have here hearsay and what are alleged hearsay so I think one thing led to another and this myth grew bigger and bigger like myths do like Greek myths like any kind of myth this is American folklore this is American myth okay um, every society has them and I don't care how technologically advanced we get we're still gonna have these certain stories in our in our culture not just don't no, I shouldn't say our culture we're gonna have these these kind of stories in all of all of humankind here okay so that's what I think happened, and I think the evidence is pretty clear. And and I think that um, you say, well, you just dismissed all of these accounts. No, I didn't. 
I looked at them, I read them, okay? And again, I'm going to say the simplest explanation is most likely the correct one. It is simple and most logical that John Bell was poisoned by somebody with arsenic, okay? Second of all, when a story like this gets started, okay, they tend to grow. That's, the, that's a fact, and I think that's the most reasonable explanation for this. What started as, you know, something akin to the little Bloody Mary myth that we had as kids grew and grew when we had adults involved and, and it spread. Those things are logical. Those things make sense. That's what I believe happened. And that's, you know, that, that is, I'm convinced. And it just, this is the way it smells. This is the way it feels. This is what my <laughs> former law enforcement radar is telling me. This is my gut reaction to it. And I looked into it and what my gut reaction, everything makes sense. It lines up. So there you go. Um, I'm glad that you listened today, and if you don't agree, go ahead and leave a comment. If you do agree, leave a comment and like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, um, I look forward to hearing from you, and yeah, hey, maybe maybe you can convince me that I'm, uh, I'm off base. I'd love to hear it. Take care. Wrangle on.